To the member for Kuyong. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I rise to speak today following the tabling of the House of Representatives Standing Committee on Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders report titled Doing Time, Time for Doing into Indigenous Youth in the Criminal Justice System. Madam Deputy Speaker, this topic makes my heart break. It's 20 years since the Royal Commission into Aboriginal deaths in custody, with its nearly 340 recommendations. But today, in Aboriginal communities, incarceration levels are even higher than they were back then. And in the words of Mick Gooder, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Commissioner, we have failed miserably in the last 20 years. Indigenous juveniles aged between 10 and 17 years of age and Indigenous young adults between the ages of 18 and 24 make up a disproportionate part of our prison population. Indigenous juveniles, in fact, account for 59 per cent of the juvenile prison population. They are 28 times more likely to be imprisoned than the non-Indigenous counterparts. According to the prison census data between, taken between 2000 and, and 2010, Indigenous men and women in custody has gone up by 55 per cent for men and 47 per cent for women. This at a time when the Indigenous population of Australia is only 2.5 per cent of the national population. <coughs> Quite clearly, this is not good enough. And this report makes clear that the level of contact by Indigenous youth with our criminal justice system is unacceptable, too high and needs dramatic and drastic action. The impact of having such a high number of Indigenous youth in our criminal justice system has implications far and wide. Implications for the family unit, for the broader community, for levels of school attendance, which in remote communities is less than 50% for their subsequent employment chances and for their, for their likelihood of escaping the negative influences of substance and narcotic abuse. We need programs that tackle the root causes of this offence by young Indigenous juveniles. We need to get the kids more engaged we need to work with families. We need to create employment opportunities. We need to end the substance and narcotic abuse. We need an integrated intergovernmental approach. Madam Deputy Speaker, in this report, there are over 40 recommendations. Recommendations that talk about engaging and empowering Indigenous communities in the development and the implementation of programs. How better to integ integrate and coordinate the initiatives by government agencies, non-government agencies and community groups. How we need to focus on early intervention and how we need to engage Indigenous leaders and particularly elders. In these 40 recommendations, there are some very important suggestions including local mentoring programs, improving the recreational and sport-related activities, better funding for these, because these programs will offer these Indigenous youth a better, a better life and a better lifestyle, more gender-appropriate accommodation for Indigenous youth, particularly housing plans that are better that for younger people, leave them better equipped when they actually leave detention. Better funding for programs to deal with substance and narcotic abuse. Greater focus on mental health programs. Interestingly, it suggests this report hearing tests for all children starting in preschool and getting police training specifically for them to be more aware of 
young people that they encounter who may have a hearing loss. Incentives for school attendance, breakfast and lunch programs included. If we can get them to school, we offer them an alternative lifestyle to one spent in the prison system. Teacher development programs, enabling our teachers to recognise <coughs> poor health in their students, enabling our teachers to have greater cultural awareness and for them to engage with students who may have poor English language skills. We need more incentives for employers to take on Indigenous apprenticeships. Interestingly and importantly, we need to raise the profile of the Australian Defence Force recruitment opportunities among Indigenous youth. Norforce is a good example for many Indigenous youth, how their communities are playing a vital role in the protection of our nation. Increased employment opportunities for Indigenous men and women in the police force. Establishing and funding a national Indigenous interpreting, interpreter service. And getting the Australian Institute of Criminology to do a more detailed analysis of sentencing options and outcomes for Indigenous youth. They need to look into the use of diversionary options to determine whether there are alternative sentencing options other than incarceration for Indigenous youth. And critically, we have to examine the rehabilitation process. We, in this report, it suggested assigning community service caseworkers, better counselling for substance and alcoholic, alcohol abuse, and also engaging the families of those who find their way into our criminal justice system. Madam Deputy Speaker, Noel Pearson has written about a speech that a young 15-year-old Aboriginal woman named Tanya Major gave in front of John Howard in 2003. She was from the Cape York Peninsula. And in this speech, she told her audience, including the then Prime Minister, that she was the only student in her primary school class that went on to be successful. She was the only girl not to have a child at the age of 15 or before. She was one of only three children in her class not to become an alcoholic. Seven of her classmates had been in prison. Four had tragically committed suicide. She went on to get an education including a university degree and forged a new path for herself. Madam Deputy Speaker, if we get more Indigenous youth to school, if we lift the Year 12 retention rates from around the 35-36% that they are today, if we get systematic help for those Indigenous youth in our prison system. In this report, there is a study that was conducted in New South Wales that found that 90 per cent of Indigenous juveniles in the prison system tested positive to drugs, a remarkable statistic. If we show them the way through education, if we intervene to stop this economic disadvantage, we do have a chance. In conclusion, Madam Deputy Speaker, we must do better. We need to be innovative. We need to f focus, as Noel Pearson and others have talked about, on the issue of personal responsibility. And we can't leave people behind if they can't help themselves. If Australians want to know what the true moral challenge for our time is, it is Indigenous disadvantage, and particularly, as we learn from this report, it is the disproportionate and tragic numbers of Indigenous youth that are incarcerated in our jails today.